While every part of Texas has history, some of our oldest towns and consequently oldest stories are found in East Texas, where the people and the pines collide. And today, we trip to one of those old towns. Like a Texas rose, it's colorful and vibrant and smells really good. Part of the reason they call it the Rose City. Hello, from Tyler. This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. East of Dallas by about an hour and a half, you'll find Tyler, our rosy capital. Named after John Tyler, the president of the US when Texas became a state in 1845. A year later, this town was founded. And because of its age, many of the buildings here predate the Civil War. In fact, the old red brick streets and many of the old homes still exude a sort of antebellum southern charm. Here at the center of Smith County, Tyler has enjoyed more than a century of affluence. Cotton, lumber, oil, and finally the cash crop that really made Tyler famous, roses. And no better way to stop and sniff it all in than right here at the Tyler Rose Garden. I beg your pardon. Actually, I did promise you a rose garden. And here it is. I mean, we are in Tyler. But this city garden was started in the 1950s when the Tyler rose industry was so big, they literally supplied over half of the roses sold in America. So this garden was sort of planted as a living, breathing catalog for at-home gardeners to come and pick out their favorite variety. Because I mean, you have rose-colored and rose-scented and rosy posy. I uh, know nothing about roses, I really don't. But you don't have to be a trained horticulturalist to know a pretty rose when you see it. And even an uncultured man like myself can appreciate the beauty, the aroma, the enchanting magnificence and mesmerizing scents coming. Okay, I'm getting a little carried away. But this is a great place to slow down and as they say, smell the roses. But there's another attraction here a museum dedicated to the queen of all roses and the festival that begins her reign. This is museum director Liz Ballard. This is incredible. Yes, it is. This actually houses all of the history of the Texas Rose Festival that dates back into the early 1930s. But this definitely ain't a normal festival. Think of it as Tyler's debutante ball mixed with Mardi Gras, mixed with the costume design of a little girl's princess fantasy. And it happens every October when the court is named and the queen is crowned wearing the most extravagant dresses. This one right here, she was the queen in 2001. Her theme was Legacies of the Lone Star State. So as you can see, her collar up on the gown has blue bonnets and... The, the trains alone are mind-blowing. They're beautiful. How long are they? They're about 15 feet long, and it takes about six months for about eight people to work on them full time. The queen and the ladies-in-waiting are local Tyler girls who are 19 years old. The duchesses of the court can come from any town in the country, but every dress comes from the mind of one designer. Incredible. Yeah. And there, here we go, a throwback dress. That's 35? 1935. She actually had two great-grandchildren that were in the court this year, so we've got several families that are on the fourth generation of participation. Wow. Mm -hmm. So there's a big legacy component to this. Yes, there is. There is. So how does one become queen? Well, it isn't a pageant in the traditional sense, but has to do with the young lady's family, volunteerism, and of course, her long-standing connection to Tyler. Now, uh, don't take this the wrong way, but y'all know y'all are crazy, right? We're a little over the top. We yeah. didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's not a bad thing. Texans no. have always been a little right. crazy. Right. I mean, I do really appreciate the fact that it's mm -hmm. this long-standing tradition and legacy and culture and history. Yes. I think a lot of these things are getting lost. Mm -hmm. But my gosh, it is just, it's, it's 
it's over the top. It is over the top, and each year it has progressed to be even a little more over the top. But isn't that kind of what makes it special? I mean, after all, what would the world be like without crazy people? And so for that, I salute you, crazy rose people of Tyler. Well done. Pop quiz, who was the Tyler Rose? Earl Campbell. Oh. All right. Star of University of Texas. Heisman winner. Star of the Houston Astros. <laughs> Houston Oilers. <laughs> What, what, oh, he, them what position did he play for the Astros? He, he played center more. field <laughs> running back. <laughs> <laughs> You're covering home plate, and Earl Campbell is coming in from third. And we, we'll lose the game. I quit. And you, I, <laughs> I throw the ball away. Right. I throw it away yeah. and, and fetal. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a place that's been a legend in Tyler even longer than Earl Campbell, and that's Stanley's Barbecue. Opened in the 1950s under the watch of Mr. J.D. Stanley, he forged a solid reputation for his East Texas style of Q. And in 2006, the firebox passed to current owner and pit boss, Nick Pincus. We got some beef ribs working up here. I love this it. Some brisket trimmings that are just too good to, you know, not make something awesome out of. We'll chop them up. Wait, okay, so you're not just gonna trim it and discard it. Like, let's start with the trimmings. We're in East Texas, man. It's about chop brisket. Oh, so okay. We gotta have something to chop chop up. Waste not, my friend. Yeah, and then you know, we got finished real deal holy field briskets Ooh. in here. Is this just salt and pepper? It's just salt and pepper. Nice. And you know, to really get a feel, you hear things, you smell things, and you certainly have to start feeling things and understanding. I mean, your hands are always gonna be the best way of knowing when these bad boys are ready to come off. Is that okay, may, may I? Yes, please. So this, yeah, this is a little bit of the the oh, lean oh. part of the front of the brisket. Um, that is so good. Tasty and delicious. Nick has turned Stanley's into a nationwide destination and even won some of Texas barbecue's highest honors without compromising what makes East Texas barbecue, East Texas barbecue. So yes. This is what we do. Yes. So we are in East Texas. Pretty different style of barbecue. I appreciate that, and I like people who are sticking to that tradition instead of just, let's say, mimicking a famous place in Austin. Sure, you know, I'm I'm just a current torchbearer. I didn't start this place 60 years ago. It's an East Texas barbecue joint. The sandwiches are always and probably will be the number one seller here, just okay, always. Yeah. Can't miss sandwiches like the smoked chicken mother clucker. And then there are the tacos. Oh, the tacos. But there's one special sandwich that comes with a taste of history, the brother-in-law that's been served here for decades. This is the first thing I ever ate at Stanley's. This is a hot link that's smoked and some sauce. You melt a piece of just plain old American cheese, pile some chopped brisket on it. It's there's nothing wrong with this sandwich. No. Like the sourdough bun. People talk like smack. Why are you putting cheese on it? Just try it. Oh, it's yeah. just so good. All right, man, ribs. Yeah. I mean, these are consistently called some best ribs in Texas, am I right? Hopefully. Dude, that's so good. They're really, really good. But it's got like a uh, like a southern sweetness to it, right? Like that, but it also has some, you know, close to the border spice kind of influence yeah. in it as well. I don't think I'm as bound to tradition as a lot of people. And I had never done this before, and this was something where we're like, we took it very seriously. Well, we're gonna learn how to do this, but we're also kind of like, well, what can we do to make it ours? How can we have fun? And that really has been a really cool part of it is we have it, we do have the legacy of a name that's 60 years old. Okay. But we've also been able to inject our personality and our spin on it and get feedback from the Stanley family that, hey man, he would be really proud of you guys. Like, he would be loving this, so. Oh, that's cool. That makes us feel really, really good. That's great, man, thank you. So after a good barbecue meal, well, you always gotta find some dessert. And today, well, I went ahead to one of the largest, most under the radar operations in Tyler, the Tyler Candy Company. If you've ever bought one of those pink candy disc things from the gas station, well, chances are it was made in this building. And while they don't normally give public tours, well, we figured y'all would want to see this. Whoa, all right. 
Dickie's Jumbo Peanut Patty. What do you do for people who want the large peanut patty, though? We put two of them out. <laughs> two of them, yeah. This is owner Ron Sumachek. Tyler Candy Company has been open since 1941 and still uses some of the original equipment. This looks like the stuff that uh, helped us win World War II. It is. Uh, <laughs> is it really? Okay. It smells like a candy factory, too. It smells like a lot of sugar. I can't smell it anymore. <laughs> I've been here for so long. The only time I get a good smell of anything is when they're doing a peppermint oil. Okay. It just so happens they're making peppermints right now. Started off over there, okay. cook, cooking the syrup. Then they put it over here and they dump it on this table. <laughs> That's awesome. It's a big pile of sugar lava. Part of it becomes red, while the other becomes white as it's stretched. And here comes the peppermint oil. We might want to step away. <laughs> that stuff gets strong. The camera guys are getting dusted. <laughs> it's wafting towards you, Daniel. Burns the eyes just a little. Right around here. Can't say he didn't warn us, but now I give you the world's largest peppermint that's put into this contraption, squeezed and stretched, and cut into tiny pieces. Fresh off the line. Yeah, put that in your mouth. Doesn't that have a good peppermint flavor? Oh, that was delicious. And because it's still warm, it, it chews kind of like bubble gum at first. I don't believe you. There. Oh, yeah. Ooh, that, it is warm. It's warm, I told you. It chews. Yeah. It chews like. That's really cool. Give one to Daniel. Daniel, you need one too. I'll take one. Sure. <laughs> oh. Oh. That's right. This company is also famous for its pecan logs and old fashioned peanut brittle. But what I really want to know is how they make their signature pink peanut patties. Right here, we mix up 400 gallons of syrup every night. Wow. You guys are buying enough sugar to keep a small country in business, huh? And yeah, we buy it by the truckloads. Yeah. <laughs> they take peanuts, pitcher of syrup, put it in here. OK. It takes 30 minutes for it to go around and cook. Man, that's this contraption right here. Yes. A medieval looking peanut patty smelter. This thing's like something from a blacksmith shop in the dark ages. And after being cooked, the pink goo is scooped into a form that cools as it travels the road to my belly. Ooh! That's as fresh as a peanut patty gets. Oh, yes. Here we go. Oh, that's good. That's as good as a hot piece of pecan pie. Maybe better, you know? <laughs> well, we do a special process on the peanuts. So they still taste like ballpark peanuts. They do. Yeah, you still get that saltiness. And you don't get that from a lot of other companies. Mm. About 16,000 patties come off this line every day, making Tyler Candy Company officially the largest peanut patty producer in the world. Oh, no. What happens to all the broken ones, Ron? Uh, you have to eat them before you leave. All right, okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Come on, boys, let's try. You're gonna eat that whole tray? I'm gonna need help, but we can do it. We can do it. <laughs> Truthfully, the main reason to visit the factory is the small broken candy shop up front. It's the shop of misfit candy. But don't worry, Candy, you have found a home with me. Old fashioned brittle, some peanut patties, peppermints. Uh oh, what am I? I'm like a kid in a candy store is what I am. Woo. As long as there's a Texan somewhere who loves sugar, there will always be a Tyler Candy Company. We now interrupt this programming to remind you to like and subscribe. Now back to the road. All right, no, for real. You're semi-hungry. How many of these could you eat? It's hard to say when you're not semi-hungry, though. All right, just you gotta. This is take some mind work, Daniel. You gotta think <laughs> okay. on this. Okay. You're, I could oh, eat half of that. Hungry. Half. I could eat seventy-one percent. I could eat one. Oh, I could definitely. No, no, no. I was going three or four. Oh no! It's oh. solid sugar. Well, yeah, uh, but you can just push through like a champion. Oh. You couldn't get. Do I get? I could get, get. Do I get a cup of water? How nope. While it may feel like one, Tyler, Texas isn't really a small town. I mean, there's over 100,000 people who live here. And while it still isn't really a big city either, 
It's got a few attractions that could easily hang with the big boys, and one of those is the great Caldwell Zoo. So this is like one of those unexpectedly awesome zoos. You know, when you step into a smaller zoo, you never know what to expect, but I'm telling you, this one is totally worth the stop. They got lions, they got bears, they got lemur monkeys. I mean, what else do you want? Throw in some rhinos, a white tiger, and you got yourself a zoo. Oh yeah, can't skip the herpetarium. Oh man, there's not much creepier than a snake house. Officially a herpetarium, which I think is even a creepier word for a snake house. Okay, here we are overlooking the African savanna. We have elephants here, we have giraffes, we have pumbas and timons and zazus. As you can see, I got all my African savanna education from Lion King, it's true. Next is one stop that I'm super excited about because we aren't just observing the animal habitats, we're going inside them. So we're actually going into the penguin exhibit for a penguin encounter. Close encounters of the penguin kind. They call this the penguin encounter. No parking necessary. And here's zoologist Nikki Hartman. So these are warm weather penguins? Right, and out of the 17 species of penguins, uh, most of them are actually warm weather. What? Mind blown. These are African penguins who live on the beach, not icebergs. And I realize there's a lot I don't know about penguins. Whitney's feeding two different types of fish right now. Um, the bigger ones are herring and the smaller ones are capelin. They're looking at you like they're waiting on a particular kind of fish. It's like, no, 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 I don't want that. Penguins and zoos can be picky. They, they? We hand feed them three times a day. They, we don't limit how much food that they He's want. so cold. <laughs> he didn't even care. He didn't he even say no it. thank you. He just kind of gave you the cold beak. Just like, uh-uh, <laughs> nope, not happening. Penguins got attitude, man. Yeah, Look at so this, dude. this is Duncan. Yes. Duncan is the first hatched penguin at Caldwell Zoo. Hey, buddy. I want to pet you so bad, but I'm trying to be good. <laughs> Duncan, we say Duncan's in his terrible twos, or he acts like that little brother, you know? Uh huh. Always kind of pestering, always getting a little bit into trouble. Yeah, Duncan is my favorite. <laughs> this this dude is so curious, man. <laughs> we'll take you on the road. That's fine. We do go to the coast and eat a lot of really good fish. Sometimes I think you could probably have him. <laughs> <laughs> this is too much fun, y'all. This is incredible. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. You know, one of the reasons that we do these interactions here and we bring guests into our penguin exhibit is because African penguins are critically endangered in the wild. Really? And they're estimated to go extinct within our lifespan. I don't like the sound of that at all. But we can all help by limiting our plastic use and making smart seafood choices. But the first step to caring about conservation is to care about the animals you're saving. Oh. Yeah, they're very soft. So Those soft. feathers lay on top Whoa. of each other like shingles on a roof. Really? That feels like really thick fur. And after this encounter, well, how could you not love penguins? <laughs> I hope you felt that penguin encounter as closely as I did. That was awesome. So there's one place we haven't really explored yet, and that's the heart of Tyler and its historic downtown. But we can't properly visit without paying our respects to one of the most famous Tyler residents to ever live. Few are famous or well-loved enough to be buried in a town's place of honor, and really none earn a spot right in front of the courthouse. Well, that is unless you're Shorty the Squirrel. This guy lived for 15 years right here downtown. Loved by all, hand fed by many, and when he finally succumbed to old age, well, they loved him so much, they buried him right here. You know, let us all take a moment and remember Shorty the Squirrel. I, I wrote a little something just, just in his honor. I'd like to share it with you all. All right. Shorty Shorty, our furry friend, We'll remember you until the end. Hungry and brave, you charmed us all. And you may have been short, but your legend stands tall. We'll remember you forever, Shorty. Ah, I wasn't even born yet, but it hurts still. 
One by one, the downtown buildings are filling up with exciting businesses that keep it vibrant. One of those is a brewery that's doing more than just changing a downtown. They're changing the way we think of beer. Welcome to ETX Brewing. This is owner Brian Gilstrap. All right, so this is the brewery, huh? Yeah, this is where all the magic happens. Okay, how much magic y'all got going on at, at any given moment? So, you know, we have five fermenters, two brides, so uh -huh. at any moment we can have five different beers going on. Okay. But, you know, the creative juices never stop flowing. You know, we've, sure. got, we've got some stuff in barrels behind us. I see that. Um, this operation started as an experiment by Brian and his brother Matt, and the two just can't stop trying things pretending like they're beer mad scientists and putting everything in beer from lemon head candy to Asian noodles. Matt and I have been brewing beer in my backyard since 2002. And we, yeah. did that, we did that for 15 years and <laughs> my wife said, you know, something's gotta change. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And not only did that hobby change into a full-blown brewery business, but Brian's better half Annie joined the team as well. Now, are you just kind of going along with his love of beer, or you love beer too? I do love beer too, but I will tell you that when he started making it, I didn't love it. And then they got better, Okay. and I started picking the beer they were making over what we bought at the store, and I was like, I think you're onto something here. There we here. go. Ooh, that's really good. I love yeah, that one. that's a delicious IPA. ETX has four flagship beers, but there are dozens of out-of-the-box brews that make their way to the tap room. Now this one is a kettle sour. So this is Berry Sourus Rex. Berry Sourus Rex. It's gonna be tart. Woo! Yeah, it hits you back here. That's great though. Now this one is a smoothie beer. What, what, what <laughs> is a smoothie beer? A little bit of beer, a little bit of fruit. <laughs> you know, if I had to drink smoothies every morning for breakfast, that'd be the kind of smoothie I want. But none of these are as strange as making beer with chow mein noodles. Chow mein noodles in the beer. Chow mein noodles with Is this in allowed? The oil. There's no rules, so we can do whatever we want. Okay, all right. I can get behind that. Oh, it's it's good. So I'm gonna grab a pint and head over to their connected restaurant, The Porch at ETX, run by Annie's sister Meredith and her husband Aaron. And full disclosure, Aaron's my cousin. Cousin! What's going on? All right, you were crazy enough to open a restaurant. Yes, sir. Why? Just, I love food. I love feeding people. Yeah? And I think we have the best burger in East Texas. Well, as long as I've known you, you've been like a burger guy. I have been. You were always on the quest for the yes. world's best burger. Yes. And now you've opened a burger restaurant. So yes. that's a pretty high standard. We grind it here in-house. That's awesome. And um, Nate's come up with all the recipes. He's come up with his own seasoning. Yeah. He makes all the sauces. And our porch burger is just amazing. Nate is the chef and his burger concoctions are a thing of beauty. He was even bold enough to name one after himself, the Nate Nasty. It's a half pound of beef, cheese, bacon, pulled pork, mac and cheese, and finally, a fried egg. Oh, this is a burger for the ages. Are you kidding me? It's like a burger and a side and breakfast all combined into one. Y'all watch watch this. This is just this is just gonna be gratuitous. But I must I must do it. Oh yeah. That's beautiful. Oh yeah. That's a beautiful thing. Part of me wants to get a fork and knife, but part of me thinks that that's given up. It's not believing in yourself. <laughs> so here we go. Oh. Here it goes. Oh yeah. I love my job. Gosh, there, there's something about it. You got a really well-seasoned patty. You got this pulled pork, which adds another texture. And you got this sweet heat, which is adding a, almost like a, like a layer of, of barbecue sauce and hot sauce all at the same time. I'm really glad the napkins are close by. There's gonna, we're gonna be needing a lot of these. When you find a town with culture as plentiful as the buds on a vine, and food that's sweeter than the scent of fresh flowers, not to mention friendly locals even more colorful than their famous rose garden, well, that's a town worth tripping. And I know they say that a day trip by any other name would smell as sweet, but truthfully, none smells sweeter than Tyler. So I'll see all y'all out on the road. Bye con Dios, amigos.
Howdy, y'all. Follow along with my adventures at Chet Tripper on Instagram and at the Day Tripper TV on Facebook and YouTube. Or head to thedaytripper.com for travel guides, past episodes, and info on our mobile app and Team Day Tripper. This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. Howdy, y'all. Chet the Day Tripper here. Thanks so much for tripping with us. Uh, remember, while you're here, like this video, subscribe to our channel so that we can stay out there on the road and keep on tripping. Did we miss anything in this town? Leave us a comment, let us know. We love finding out about new stops with all of your tips. And if you love Epic Texas Day Trips, remember to check our channel. We got a lot of them on there. Also, don't forget, if you want some sweet Day Tripper merch or another cool Texas made product, Come see us in Georgetown at the Day Tripper World Headquarters. You can also shop online if you check the link down there in the caption. All right, y'all. Bye, con Dios, amigas.